the biggest entrepreneur platform on the planet. This is Business Rockstars. This is Business Rockstars. I'm Brittany Whitney, and my guests today are Sid and Shay McGee, founders of Studio McGee. Sid and Shay, thanks so much for joining us today. Well, Sid and Shay, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, for those who are not familiar, tell us about your entrepreneurial journey and kind of how Studio McGee got its start. Yeah, so it started with just me. I didn't study design. I studied communications and I, I liked that work, but was so distracted by like my love for design. We moved into our first apartment and then we uh, bought our first home and I just, I couldn't get enough of it, but was very scared to make a career of it because I didn't have any schooling and um, Sid kind of in the background was like just nudging me to pursue that dream. And I, I went to school at night and took a few community college courses just to build my confidence and learn more of the technical terminology and the programs. And about this time we had bought our first home and it was a foreclosure that needed some work. And Instagram was really starting to catch on uh, socially and not really any, any interior designers were using that as a platform to market their business. And I realized it was a free way for me to put my work out there. So I doc started documenting the progress on our home and eventually that landed my first project, which was a small, like bookcase styling projects. And then that turned into rooms, which turned into full homes. And um, that was kind of me running it out of our spare bedroom. And I, I was busy. I was getting a lot of work and Sid was doing an affiliate marketing business with his um, oldest brother and decided to leave and was like, well, I'm not I've been doing that for yeah. a while. I've been I mean, it's going on well. like five years, almost like 20 hours a day felt like and uh was ready to do something different had learned a ton but was like okay working with family was great but i think i want to try not working with family that'd be a really good idea um and so we had moved into this home we had renovated it we had um like a three-month-old baby and i thought now is a good time to quit um and then i'll just kind of figure it out and um, so I came home one day and Shay, had, Shay and I had discussed this idea of, of me, you know, in like a hypothetical situation, quitting one day and doing my own thing. Um, so it was kind of surprising when I came home and I said, hey, I, I quit today. Um, and she was like, wow. And, and, and so that led with her, you know, kind of going more with design and, and being like, okay, well, I'm going to lean more into the design side of things and, and grow that business well because we need to pay for everything while you're figuring out what you're going to do so I, I had explored some some different businesses and um in the same industry and realized like yeah, i really I don't necessarily want to do that i'd love to work on a brand that could be tell a good brand story that could have you know a much more public facing side that could be cool and i would love to just be part of that even though i'm not the creative lead on that. I just would love to be a part of that. And um, that kind of led to, to Shay having a really good idea. I begged him to come on with me and he wasn't really interested. And so after probably like six months of me saying like, this is like, I have too much work. I need someone to help. He finally agreed. And I think that once we decided to go into business together, it was like, this wasn't it's going to be a test run for us like we were all in and so we we sold our home in california and we took the money that we made from that and moved to utah and we used that as the runway to start studio mcgee which is um started as a design firm and now includes mcgee and co which is our e-commerce business and um other other things like our target line as well yeah, it's, it's really amazing to see kind of how your 
career and your business has taken off, um, you've gained such a loyal following of design fanatics kind of all across pretty much every social media platform. Um, what social media tips do you have? And, you know, how did you kind of, when did you notice that explosive growth really taking off? Well, early days, it was interesting because there, there wasn't like the algorithm wasn't really playing into things. And so, uh, it was kind of like the more you posted and the more you commented on other people's accounts, the more followers you would get. It was a very simple formula to follow. And so I just spent so much time doing that. Um, but ultimately when I was posting, I would get a lot of questions about, um, you know, what paint color is that? How do I do, you know, hang that gallery wall? And the design industry is traditionally a very secretive, exclusive industry. And I think as an outsider, I realized that I was building this community that was built on sharing. And so we built all of our platforms and this loyal following really based on sharing information. And of course there are things that we, you know, trade secrets that we keep for our clients, but there's so much that you can share where people can take like nuggets of design tips from like these multi-million dollar homes they, we, we design and they can be applied to like anything, um, any size of home. And I think that being able to relate those principles, whether that was through video, photo, our blog, Pinterest, whatever it is, it was all about giving and sharing. And ultimately that giving and sharing then ended up reciprocating um, a loyalty that we have built today. Amazing. And I kind of want to go back to when your idea was just an idea and it was just a passion. Um, when did you kind of notice the profit taking off and um, what kind of tips do you have for entrepreneurs who are just starting to get that cash flow in and really want to take their business to the next level? I mean, I think, I think for us, we were, um, we were fortunate to be in a position to like, to like sell our home and be like, okay, let's move, move to Utah. And so we had a little bit of, of money to live off of. Um, but even as our business started to, to get traction and grow, like our first response was to continue to not take money from the company for ourselves for just a little while longer and hire um, a designer, right? A junior designer to work with Shay. And it was like, that was, and Shay, Shay's going to laugh at me because I, I think I told her like five times, like, hey, just a little bit longer and then we'll take like money for ourselves. Okay. Like, um, and it was really just like, hey, what is um, kind of identifying like, what are we doing here? Like, are we creating more of a, a lifestyle business and we are going to run it with like a small team? And so it should be something that we like take, you know, kind of dividends and payouts on early or is it something like hey we really want to grow um, to a much larger size so we need to, to sacrifice and kind of keep as much cash in the business as possible and so i think we knew we wanted to grow it to be you know as big as we could um, make it and so we continue to just put as much back in um, to the business for a long time um because that was like our, our overall growth is like let's 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 put in more money so that we can have more to work with and more to draw on in three years four years five years down the road instead of like what can i get out now right and as you said you had a three-month-old baby at home right when you kind mm -hmm. of decided to really get into the thick of it um and you know startups you face new challenges every day what was kind of the biggest hurdle that you had to overcome in the early days when things were really tough and how have your challenges evolved and changed as the business grows? Oh my gosh. I don't know if we could name one, just one challenge. I just felt like the first, I mean, even now there's just, the problems change, but they don't like problems never go away. I think that early on when Sid and I had, you know, sold everything and moved here, we really wanted to start an e-commerce business at the same time as starting a design business because Sid was all about scale and he knew that like I am very invested in design projects and so I wasn't going to be able to just like let that go and so we really wanted to do that well we went to our first furniture market and 
no one would let us sell their stuff. They're like, who are you? Social media, who cares? You want to sell furniture on the internet. No one's going to buy it. And so our business plan was completely torn to shreds from within like the first two, yeah. two months. Um, so we like, okay, so I guess we'll have to make it so that they can't say no to us. And so we just really focused on building our design portfolio and building a following that was so large that they couldn't ignore us when we went back to that furniture market. And it took a few years before we proved that, um, we could be worthy of carrying these furniture lines. And so, um, we, we built a name, we got lots of publicity and, uh, but it did, it took a few years. And then I'd say like simultaneous to that, just when you're going through a lot of growth, I think that that alone is really hard because we were new, we could only afford to hire very young employees. And so the great thing about that is that they were really eager and willing to learn, but they also came in with very little experience. And so so now we're just doing everything, yeah. you know, um, for a long time. And now we're so grateful that we have this, ex you know, more experience on our team and we have other problems like, I think yeah. <laughs> like other problems, like you scale and you have a lot more people working for you and you want to make sure that like how you would do things is how like your management team is doing things with everyone across the company and and checking in on everyone and and so it's always like this, this constant changing of like someone said it, it's just like you have problems forever it's just it just changes like what which ones they are and so i think you just become better at trying not to freak out and think like everything is on fire and it's over um and just really being like okay like we let's work through this and i think you know, as Shay brought up, not being able to, you know, run with a, a an initial like revenue stream and business like mind that we wanted to. Um, I think we faced, you know, so many variations of that challenge over the last like, you know, uh, six, seven years. Like, it's like, okay, we wanted to really do furniture and that didn't work. And we wanted to work with this specific brand and that didn't work. And we, I mean, that was like, it's supposed to be like the tech guy and I like worked with like this company to build a website we spent like 90 grand on it and and we ended up like throwing it away after like four weeks of using it because it was just it just kept it breaking just kept breaking and it was like okay like our 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 new direction for commerce is like we just need to like scrap it and build a new one I think I know a guy we can get it up in like two weeks and let's go and so it was like okay um, and so I think you have to try to be as adaptable as possible and realize like, Hey, sometimes like, I thought that was going to work, but I went to swallow my pride and be like, that was, I did a terrible job over there. So let's, <laughs> let's get a new website up and going and, and, and try again. Well, you guys obviously did something right because you have a Netflix show out and a collaboration with target. Um, tell us a little bit about that. Target is, has always been a dream of mine and, I think that when we had, you know, very little money, I would still like walk through the aisles of Target and like sneak in that vase or picture frame, right? And it just like brought me so much happiness to be able to throw one of, you know, just like just these little items into my cart. And um, I have always felt really strongly about design good design principles working at really any price point and the business that we got into is you know high-end custom homes and so what we do is this designer furniture but I, there was always a part of me that wanted to be able to offer our look at um, a lower price point and better value for people and so we when we talked with Target I mean like they knew I, I like I am their fit biggest fan and customer and it was a very natural fit um and so it's been really fun to get to be a part of that um and our audience has loved it which is really cool um netflix is what i mean when we talk about challenges we when we were first starting we were approached by a production company and had no idea what we were doing and kind of went down the path of tv and it was not a good experience. 
we got denied um, and we they were trying to have Sid pretend to be a contractor and he's not. And um, we just kind of swore off TV, but we always said, but if Netflix ever reaches out like that, we can't say no to that. So that fast forward, you know, five years. And when they did ask for a meeting, like we went in and we were very honest about like, this is who we are and this is what we do. And they were really receptive to that. And so um, we were able to build the format of the show based on um, us being us. And um, that's for now we're going into season three. We're about to start filming in a month. So this is amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks. I'm sure if you look back, you probably had these huge dreams and, you know, maybe never thought that some of this would come to fruition. What advice do you have for an entrepreneur who has huge dreams, but isn't allowing themselves to start because they're really afraid of that fear of failure? Well, I mean, I, I can speak from experience that I was very afraid to be bad at the thing that I really wanted to be good at. And I think that the only way you learn how to do something is by doing it. And so no amount of research and thinking about it will ever give you the same experience or skill set that actually doing the work will give you. And so if you want to be good at something, you have to be willing to just do it. And there is absolutely no way that you're not going to make a mistake. Like you are, you're going to make a mistake, but like, I think I just had to learn like to start making this mental catalog of all of my mistakes so that I didn't make them again, but that's what makes you better. And um, there's like no perfect time to start anything. It's true. And you guys are husband and wife. Um, how do you kind of balance work and family life? Or is that just one big myth? <laughs> <laughs> it's just this ever evolving shifting thing that goes back and forth but I think we have a pretty good handle on it now I think it was much harder early on um figuring out that dynamic of like what are our roles in the company what are our roles in life what are who does what and what is our lane and um you know we had to kind of have some, some small failures of like okay we tried it that way and it didn't work and I think that we, you know, decided to dedicate our our life and time um, in the early years of the business to um, like fostering this new business and and raising like small children, and we we focused a lot of time there. Um, and then like a couple of years in, we were on like a work trip to New York, and we sat down at dinner across from each other, and we're kind of like, is this like a date? Like we haven't really been on a date for like years. And and then we're, we we started having the discussion of like, hey, we really need to make sure that we, we place an importance on time for um, each other, um, you know, taking time with whether the kids or with business to give the other person some alone time to go work out, to get uh, nails done, to just go for a bike ride, whatever it is. That's a way that we kind of show a love and caring for each other as well as like realizing, hey, the other person needs their own time. And we also need to make sure we, we have time together. And as we did those things, we could work together a ton um, and make sure that we had our personal space. And, and that's kind of everything else kind of falling in place is like, hey, with the home stuff, like whoever can just picks it up and goes like if it's me yeah I think you, in like you know. in office like we have very separate roles like I do all of the creative he runs the business I'm not telling him how to do that and he's not telling me what selections to pick but at home I think there's a lot more crossover it's like okay what time are you done with that call okay you're gonna go take you know the kids to tumbling and I'm gonna go to the grocery store whatever that may be I think that it's a lot messier like a lot back and a lot of back and forth at home yeah, absolutely. Especially with everyone this past year, I can imagine. Yeah, you know, it's a balancing act for sure. Um, mm -hmm. I kind of want to go back again to the early days of the business. Let's say someone's listening and they have this amazing idea and they're really lean on cash. What's like a few tips or what's kind of in your toolbox um, of advice that you would give them to just kind of stay lean and scrappy, but kind of make some headway? I mean, watch, watching from like perspective of like, I'm not the creative, but what could we do in kind of kickstarting like business things? I mean, I feel like 
you know, sharing kind of like story and bringing people along for like the journey was like another huge thing that I watched Shay do and that built her social following and stuff like that. Like, I think there's a lot of cool things that people can do to be like, well, I'm, hey, day one, like I'm starting my business. Like this is what I'm going to do today. And I think I'm going to go this direction. So I think in bringing people along for that journey and you tell them what you're doing and try to get people interested. I mean, I think we took a really organic approach to marketing. Um, and that, like when Sis said, we got people along like on the journey with us. Like we waited a very long time to do paid paid marketing um, because I think that there are so many ways these days to do that organically um, without spending um, a lot of money. It's time, um, but not you. I think you can do that to a point. I also think that if you, you got to kind of stretch yourself and your team to the point where you realize like, okay, we have streamlined everything as much as possible, but now we're, we're, we're stretched. We need to bring on another person, even just hiring that first person. I think when you're starting out feels like a really big leap, but, um, if you hire people that are really good at the things that you're not, you got to be honest with yourself about what you're not good at. And then like, you'll start to see, the company blossom and grow because you aren't trying to do all of all of the things. And um, that's when I think we started to see things click is when we were starting to hire people to fill in the gaps where we were failing. Yeah, that's such great advice because you can't be good at everything and your business, you know, isn't going to grow if you just keep stretching too thin. Um, right. A fun little question. What's one interior design trend that you think needs to retire? <laughs> uh, it seems like they retire and then they come out of retirement. They do. They, 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 they just that. circle back. So for a while, ever like, like cold gray walls were really in fashion. And I think we've really gone to like a warmer place now. So yes, we're still looking at neutrals, but they're like, grays maybe that have a little bit of a beige to them whereas beige was not cool for a long time so now I think we're kind of coming full circle to that yeah and if you could go back in time and give yourself one piece of advice when you were starting out super early what would you tell yourself <laughs> I mean I think that early on like Sid was saying when we, we would feel like things were on fire like it just felt like oh my gosh, I'm going to lose my business or everything's going to fall apart because of like this problem. But if you look at the problem as an opportunity and you make a change and a pivot, um, it will be hard, but you'll get through it and you'll probably come out better on the other side. And so I think that we've tried to approach our business that way. And um, knowing that having had some of those experiences, I would tell my younger self to chill out a little bit yeah I think that's a really good point I mean I would and I would advise myself that what we have learned is what Shay's saying is that you know I'm saying what I'm saying no, I'm not, I'm not, trying, I'm not mansplaining what yeah, okay. you're saying I'm just saying what I've learned is that when we face those challenges those those challenges or those failures like those are the areas of opportunity so like take a breath and then realize like if you can that's your area of opportunity. If you figure out how to do that, like shipping is, is a disaster. We can't fulfill product fast enough. Like we'll figure it out. And then that becomes like an area where we can like fulfill and get product out. No problem. Now we're really strong at that. And that allows us to um, really become a stronger company. So there's always going to be those areas. Like so just use those opportunities or the, you know, the struggles for opportunities to grow. like focus into those areas, lean into them. Yeah. Um, so what are kind of the next steps in your business? Well, I think we're, we're going for more of everything right now. So we're going <laughs> season three, we have a couple of years of our target partnership on the horizon um, and McGee and Co is growing so fast. Um, and, you know, Sid was speaking to us, like pouring everything in year after year. And we've gotten to a point where even doing that, we couldn't keep up with the demand and it's 
been a family run business for, you know, years and we did not take the decision to take um, investment money lightly, but we realized we reached a point where that was, we didn't do that. If we didn't partner with someone that really had knowledge of the industry, um, we were going to lose out um, because we just couldn't keep up. And so we um, partnered with Strand Equity and I'm a huge fan of a lot of the brands that they work with. So um, I was excited to um, partner with a team that could bring in outside knowledge besides just providing money to the business. And so this next year we're developing so many new products and hoping to go into kids and baby. And uh, we, we are hoping to really expand all the things that we're offering and improve the customer experience. So that is the focus. Big one. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. I'm so excited. Um, you know, I want to spruce up my baby's nursery. So I'm excited <laughs> to get okay. good stuff. Yes, we're, we're, I'm excited for that too. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'm like shopping our own stuff. So really, really, really cool. Amazing. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. And where can people learn more about you guys? Where can they purchase um, your product and your furniture? Yeah, so you can follow us on Instagram at Studio McGee, also at McGee & Co, which is our um, product line. And you can also find us on target.com and in stores. We have a YouTube channel all under Studio McGee name and um, Dream Home Makeover is our show on Netflix. Well, you guys, it was such a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much for joining us today. And I can't wait to watch the Netflix show and to purchase um, some Studio McGee. Awesome, <laughs> Thank you. I love that. Thank you. Thank you, have a good day.